Hello and welcome to Knife Delights. It's two for Tuesday and it's time for part two of my cleaning and refurbishment of these Hammer brand knives. Enjoy! <laughs> Well, I hit the rivets with the co uh, polishing compound and the Dremel tool. Hit them again. Now, they're kind of recessed down in there, so it's hard to get down in there with just the regular round felt pad. So I got this cone-shaped pad out, and I was able to get down in there, you know, a little more detailed. And uh, so anyway, I've got the rivets looking pretty good and uh, the spine here of the blade looks like I've remo removed all the rust off of it so it's looking pretty good again this is just the co polishing compound no pol no actual like case paste on it or anything so this knife is looking pretty good it looks so much better. What a world of difference. Well, the sheath had gotten dried off here. And so I've been putting some of this conditioner on. This is a homemade conditioning product made uh, by my good friend there at Last Chance Knives. And he sent me a couple blocks of this. And just one block is going to last a long time. So having two blocks of it is really going to last. But anyway, I've done this portion here, and you can see how it's added a sheen to it. You see how much cleaner and shinier that leather looks? And then I did this side here, or this top part here. Again, I'm not using it on the rough leather. But you can see, nice and clean and shiny. I just thought I'd save this last part so you can kind of see. This is what the sheath looks like before. It's a lot cleaner looking looking nicer after using the saddle soap and I failed to mention when you're using the saddle soap you use a use a wet rag use a wet rag with it but so all you got to do is just get a little bit on your thumb and forefinger there and just rub it in this is made from natural products so it will not harm your skin at all There's no chemicals in it which makes it very nice now I know there's other things you can use to condition leather uh, some people have suggested uh, olive oil. Of course, there's uh, mink oil. You know, some of the commercial products out there called mink oil. And, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of things you can use. But this is nice and simple, and it's all natural. That's what I like about it. No chemicals to it. So you can just rub it in like that. And you can take... Uh, Oh, yeah, take this uh, dry rag here, and we'll just wipe it off just a little bit. Rub it in there. Kind of wipe the excess off. And just look at that, how it brings the color back out. You can see the difference. Nice little sheen to it. And that's just with one little application. You know, you can continue to put applications on there. But that sheath looks a whole lot better than when we started. Well, let's go back to this wonderful pocket knife, this Camp King here. A Hammer brand Camp King. Look at, with the uh, mineral oil, see how that stuff just wiped off? Look at that. Yeah. Oh, this is going to clean up wonderful. Look at the back springs now. See there? But you can see I'm, I'm getting stuff off of it. 
That mineral oil just really loosened that stuff up, didn't it? So we've got a few little specks of it here and there. It's kind of hard working around this bale. <laughs> That's the other wonderful thing when you get these old camp kings that have the bales. Whoops, hit my tripod. A lot of times the bales are missing. Especially, now these, this is a, you know, uh, what would you say, permanently attached or riveted in. Some of the bales on some of the old, you know, camp style knives, they were removable. You could just pull them out. And I have a feeling a lot of people would pull them out and then lose them or what have you. So, yeah, you can see this cover. You can see the brass liner there back behind it. So, oh yeah, right there too. I don't know what's going on with that cover. Hmm, that's interesting. Look at this blade now. This is the messy part. I'm trying to get rid of all this mineral oil. No, it might need a little rubbing on it yet, a little bit of stuff on it, but it still cleaned that blade up pretty nice, didn't it? Not that it was in bad shape, but there was some stuff on it. Yep. So now it's just a process of wiping and wiping and wiping on this thing. Trying to get rid of all the mineral oil, the messy part. That's got a good hefty pull to it. Yep, can opener. Ha! Huh. Pretty neat. Okay. Get the leather punch done. And now you can see down inside real good. It wasn't real dirty. There's a little bit of stuff down in there. We'll clean that out quick. Give me a clean pad. Kind of double it over here. Get down in there. Just see what we get out. Yep, getting a little bit of stuff out of there. Then you know, clean around the pivots or back down in here you always see you always get something out of there so wipe them off a little bit poke it in and around getting all the little cracks and crevices you can it's good I don't really see any rust that's a good sign what did I say about rust? We despise rust. That's right. This is a no rust zone. It's not really pocket lint, but apparently this knife just sat around for a long time in that sheath. Just accumulated some stuff. You know, all in all, not bad. Not bad at all. And then, of course, the other thing you can do is check your back springs. So let's just, let's get a clean one just so we can see. But we cleaned on that back spring. You see how it's exposed there when you have the blade at a half stop? See how it's sticking up there? These don't appear to be too bad at all. I don't see any rust on them or crud. Got a little bit of stuff there. But you know, these if these back springs get rusty or dirty or dry and all that, that'll affect your walk and talk. So, yep, now it's just a matter of uh, keep 
poking around with the cloth and getting it dried off. So I'm happy so far. Well, after a whole lot of time and effort, this is kind of my final product here. Uh, I finished off polishing this, th both of these by hand. It took me quite a while to do, but I tell you what, to learn how to learn your knife, to really get familiar with it, there's nothing like spending the time to doing the hand polishing. And just look at that. Now with the Dremel tool, I could probably get it a little nicer. But again, I just took my time, hand polished. Everything's nice, bright, and shiny. Now I will tell you, it is a challenge to do these bolsters down here with that clevis there. Um, I ended up using some Q-tips. As you can see, I could still do a little work on them. But if you remember the original condition of this knife, uh, it's looking pretty good, I think. I still can't figure out if these shrunk or, or just, you know, it's really prevalent up here. You can see so much of the liner. I don't know if these shrunk or just what happened to those covers. But this is another reason why I buy some of these really junky knives might be even missing a blade because you never know I might run across another one of these models that's missing a blade or a broken blade or whatever and I can uh, swap out the covers but uh, this makes it unique anyway and we can look at the blade here again I just hand shined them there's some, so there's some scratching and stuff on the blade but still this blade is whoop see there these doggone fingerprints. But these blades, I think, just turned out wonderful. Very nice shot of the tang stamp there. Now, I think it says USA um, vertically there, so I think... This is like late 40s into the 50s, which means it probably would have been made by Imperial. Yeah. But, you know, overall, what a fine looking knife in great condition. So I'll kind of move along here. I know these videos have been long, but it took, took time. It took a lot of time to clean these up. And I wanted to share the experience with everybody. So, yeah, when you're doing two of them and then you end up hand polishing by hand, it takes some time. Here's our fixed blade. Again, I just hand polish this. And you can see down here on the guard, it's not as bright and shiny as if I would uh, use the Dremel on it, but it's clean. There's nothing on those, on that brass guard now. You can see the blade, very shiny. Again, there's a look at that tang stamp. Now, this does not have USA down the side of it. So, maybe this fixed blade was made before this was. I don't know. But again, I got those uh, rivets. Again, I had to use a Q-tip because they're, they're inset there just a little way. So, I used a Q-tip to get down in there to try to polish those out better. Yeah, so I think this knife turned out very nice, and so, you know, as old as they are, I think they turned out to be pretty nice. Let me just uh, expand out here just a little bit, a little better picture, because I do want to show the sheath again, and you can see that sheath. Came out looking really nice and I'll probably put a second coat or third or fourth coat of that uh, great compound last chance knives the conditioner I should say last chance knives gave me so there you have it I certainly hope you've enjoyed it and I appreciate it I know this took a long time 
But I do appreciate you uh, hanging with me here. And uh, what a fantastic find once again. I am just so excited to have this Hammer Brand combination set. So until next time, have a very delightful day.